I'm Veronica Wright and we are here at CES 2024 in the electrification area of Texas Instruments. With me here is Errol from Texas Instruments and Rob from ChargePoint. And we want to talk a little bit about the EV infrastructure. So first off with electrification and so many more EVs on the road, some people, including myself, sometimes run into charging issues. How can Texas Instruments and ChargePoint kind of improve that situation? No, that's a great question. No, thanks for having us here. Um, I would say for uh, the semiconductor side, a lot of it has to do with, you know, providing a seamless experience through innovations, through devices to enable customers to be able to have that interoperability, right? So the flexibility of like the processor to be able to do the different communication standards, um, accuracy, higher accuracies within um, monitoring voltages and currents, currents so that way you can have like, you know, um, good power efficiencies or even monitoring how much for billing purposes. Those are the key things that will enable customers to be able to innovate more and have that reliability. Yeah. Well, thank you again for having us. It's really great. I think from our perspective, we look at our drivers and we think people just want to show up, pay, uh, you know, people get on their way and not have to worry about um, what's going to happen with the station. So we think about that in a few different ways. One is working with partners like Texas Instruments, build great machines, great componentry within them, make sure we test them, make sure that the installation is really well done so that once that machine is built, it's actually put in the ground the right way. And then we've got a lot of services support services that we can put together with that so that it lasts for a decade or more when it goes into the ground. So that's the way we think about it. We feel pretty uniquely positioned to be able to deliver on that because we do the hardware, the software, and the services. So when somebody chooses to work with ChargePoint in all three ways, it works better together. And if something ends up coming up, they've only got one place that they can turn or that they need to turn uh, when they want to get that fixed. What do you think uh, the challenges really come from and how can we improve their reliability? Yeah. Well, I can take this from the start. I think that we look at it in those three ways, right, and kind of doubling down a little bit on that. You know, when we look at the stations, we have to have the absolute best parts, the absolute highest quality stations, and then we test them really rigorously, right? So we make sure that we are testing for elements, we're testing for human error, we're testing for all the different situations which might take that system offline. Then we have a robust training and certification program for those installers, so it's not just giving them information and letting them go. We, we actually put them through pretty rigorous uh, tests to make sure that they are great at what they do. And then at the end of that, we want to make sure that this thing's going to last a decade or, plus, or longer in the ground, right? And so for that, all of our support services, we also have a, what we call a network operations center where we can proactively monitor even um, not just things that have actually happened, but we can use predictive analytics and some machine learning to see when something might happen, and then we can go and uh, proactively address it. Yes. Exactly, it, even from like the semiconductor level, right? It's, at the end of the day, it's like the seamless experience, right? So developing like those flexible parts, right? Uh, so that way, no matter the standard, like they're able to implement. What is really the underlying technology from a semiconductor perspective that enables that? Um, the underlying technology, I would say, if we're looking at it, we can look at it in a few different ways. So from an embedded processing, processing perspective, we're looking at communications, like you know our Linux processors that have some of that flexibility, right, to do like the new standards, like uh, you have like NACS or ISO 15118 or IEC 61851. I think those are different ones that are coming out now, right? And then how do you make sure that all of them are reliable and connecting yes. to all these different cars? Uh, so that flexibility is there. And then there's different regions. So that flexibility of, let's say, you want to do like CAN instead of like these other communications, we can enable that with the same processor. And that flexibility is either go up in performance or down in performance. Mm. Do you see the industry consolidating on that? You mentioned the different standards and everything. Um, I would say eventually. I mean, that's that's the whole goal. Would be, probably be to eventually go to like you know uh, a different standard. Now, those are the different standard bodies that do that. Where we kind of, but at the end of the day, for us, it's not going to matter too much because of our flexibility and how we design our semiconductors to innovate, just to make sure that any any customer can utilize those devices in any way that they want. When I look at the industry, we see this trend to higher voltage systems, like from 400 to 800 volts. What yeah. does that mean for the charging situation? Yeah, well, the, the good news is for charge point is we're ready today with our stations for 800 volt cars. Um, and, and those will charge at up to 500 kilowatt speed. 
and all that speed, you know, the you know, fast switching mechanisms and that, that's all powered by Texas Instruments, which is actually really cool. Um, but in terms of, you know, what that means, I mean, I think it means that, you know, the, the industry is going to have to continue to, to get faster, be ready for that, and, and that's where we are today. Exactly. And now besides reliability, what's some other most important aspects that you want to cover? I would say like efficiency uh, as we start getting to like higher and higher amounts of like you know power we need to have even more like higher efficiency so that way for thermals and that's where I think that's a, a big area because that helps with like the reliability part as well and then also um, the interaction right the HMI portion of it right how it's easier for a customer to go to a charger and be able to like just plug it in and you know get charged, right, get the reliability of the charts, accurate billing, yeah. um, those are big things as well. And, and that's where it comes into the, the accurate metering, which then we have like, you know, our metering, like reference designs or like our ABCs, right, and MCUs that can uh, enable those sorts of higher accuracies, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things about our business model that is a little different that people don't know is that most of our stations we don't know not operate, right? We have stations that we sell and then the, the, site, uh, the site host actually operates the station. Um, but because of that, it's really quality, right? Like we have to focus on extreme quality in order to drive that reliability. So again, like partnering with the highest quality component manufacturers to make that a reality. Um, I mentioned the software, being able to monitor it, make sure that we can service it. And then the last piece that we think about a lot is how does the driver play into that, right? So we have a driver app where they can report some of the issues with the station. They can tell us what, what the quality of that station is currently today. So I really like that on one, that. by the way. Yeah, yeah, and I think for them, it's, it's a two-way street, right? They can give us that information, but then in the app, we're also telling them, hey, this station's up, hey, this station's not up. Again, to provide a really quality experience, they're not gonna find stations that aren't working, instead they're gonna be driven to ones that actually are up and, and ready to go. Yes. So. Exactly. Yeah. Now finally, what's the next best thing in EV charging? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I would say vehicle to grid would be okay. um, probably, I think, one of the next best. Are you prepared? Oh, yes, yes. We actually have, uh, you know, different devices and topologies that can do that bi-directional um, power transfer uh, to enable that vehicle to grid, as well as the communication side as well. Yeah, yeah, I'd say just continuing to grow speed, capacity. One thing that we uh, we put up on LinkedIn this week is that, um, you know, we're ready for megawatt charging. So there's lots of different standards coming, but, you know, we are, we're essentially saying, hey, whatever your standard is, we're ready for it. So, you know, hopefully we start standardizing a little bit more as an industry, which I think would be great. But for now, like, you know, we're ready to go no matter what, uh, what the standard is that you're using. Thank you so much for taking your time. Thanks for having us.